Welcome everybody to my channel. I'm really excited today. I've got a special guest, my first guest, and I'm actually really honored to have someone of his statue uh, as my very first guest. Everybody, this is Andrew Lakemaker. Hello, uh, hello. Welcome, welcome to my channel, bud. Happy to be here. So just a little bit about Andrew. Um, you know, he's been a friend and a mentor. He's a colleague. I've actually uh, done some work for Andrew as well. Um, and He's someone I wanted to bring on the channel because he's someone who has inspired me. Uh, and I think it's going to help a lot of our viewers as well. Just hearing a little bit about Andrew, seeing that he's just a normal, regular guy. Um, he started a, his newest channel, I think, which is really awesome. It's called The Middle Class Millionaire. And uh, I think it's a perfect channel for you, Andrew. And I guess that would segue to my first question. Um, would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself and about your channels? Okay, well, uh, I'll, I'll talk to you a bit about my YouTube journey. It all started off, uh, I, I was finishing up uh, a business that was more involved into programming, creating some software and stuff. And it was, it was in the tail end of its life. And I was just talking to a friend and he's like, hey, man, uh, why don't you do a YouTube channel? And why don't you create a... Um, a website that that displays listicles so at the when i launched uh, my first youtube channel babble top we launched the youtube channel and the website at the same time and the goal with the website was to drive traffic from facebook to the website so let's just say you get a click on Facebook for a penny and hopefully with the ads on the website, you generate two pennies. So it's like arbitrage. And since we were writing for the website, we just took that content and put some videos to, to uh, tell a story on YouTube. And funny enough, the YouTube content went like that. The website went like that. So we said, you know, let's kill the website. Let's just focus on YouTube. And the rest is pretty much history. After making that top 10 channel called Babbletop, we wanted to diversify. So we created a cooking channel, which is called Dish. It's basically overhead shots of hands cooking and preparing foods. And segue a few years later people are telling me why don't we experiment where we actually have a face in front of the camera so i said okay fine let me what, what do i like talking about entrepreneurship and food and lifestyle and martial arts but I'm, i want to focus the new channel which is middle class millionaire it's going to be more focused on entrepreneurship why because the cpms are actually higher uh, when you talk about entrepreneurship or business on YouTube compared to let's say entertainment, CPMs Makes are sense. not as high. The and advertisers I'm not very... are looking to spend more money on those type of channels because the products that they sell, I guess, are worth more money. Exactly. So like like insurance companies, car companies, software mm -hmm. companies, they're willing to spend more money on a channel that's focused on business versus just say uh a top 10 movie channel or a channel talking about star wars it, it you might have higher volume with regards to an entertainment channel like mm -hmm. movies but the cpms would be a lot lower from my cool. experience yeah and for the people who don't know what cpm is it's the cost per milli million yeah cost Mi per million. Million, yeah so basically yeah. you're going to make more money per click where you know babble top you might get million clicks and make such and such money uh with the, the middle class millionaire you'll you might get half the clicks but still make more money correct that. correct so okay. so we know like starting this channel that it won't be a high volume channel with regards to traffic but uh when it comes to money there might be higher in theory there should be higher profit margins i love it i love it um, so I got a question, you know, a lot of successful people um, go to conferences, you and I have been to a conference together in Hawaii, that was pretty awesome. And um, what I wanted to ask is, have you because I haven't talked to you about this in a while, are you still going to those conferences? And if you are, 
what are some of the reasons you should go to these conferences and what are some of your goals that you're hoping to get out of that? Well, right now I go to any conference related to YouTube. So that's VidCon, VidSummit, Playlist Live, anything video related because um, there's always something to learn. You, you know, you, you don't go to a conference thinking you're going to come home with 10 ideas or 100 ideas. It might just be one or two ideas, but those are the ones that are sticky and they're going to help you succeed to improve your channel. So that's pretty much it. I mean, the other way, the other thing is all obviously to meet people in the industry, mm. meet your friends, you know, over the years, just by going to shows, you end up having, you know, industry friends and it's nice to catch up with them and bounce ideas off them. So that is something you'd recommend for any aspiring entrepreneur or businessman, try to find some yeah. conferences in your niche and attend them, huh? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I mean, th think about us. We met at an SEO conference in Hawaii. I mean, yeah. what what better conference to go to, you know? Right. Not <laughs> you a do a little work and you're in Hawaii, right? Usually those conferences are in nice locations as well. So yeah, you know, and make it another excuse to go. Um, well, so we're on to this. Uh, what made you, you, you've already talked about your channels and, and how you got into it, but as far as it's a big change from what you were doing, you know, the digital media, the marketing and all that. And now you're, you've become straight, uh, I think almost strictly a content producer. And what was that transition like? And why did you decide, okay, I'm just going to produce the content instead of. Oh, well, well, that's pretty easy because back in the days when I would deal with developers, I'm not, a, I don't know how to code. So whether they told me a project would take a day, a week, a month, I cannot assess whether they're, mm. what they're telling me is the truth, you know? Okay. I don't want to say subjective, but I'm, like, like I said, I'm, I'm not a coder. I can't tell what they're doing. But when it comes to content, the beauty with YouTube, for example, is you put out content and you get so much data, so much information within three hours, you know if your content is going to work or not going to work. And you, you don't need to be a computer programmer. You don't need to be a designer. You don't need to be a video editor. The Google, YouTube provides you all the tools to be successful mm -hmm. on the platform. They give you the tools to interpret the information that they have mm -hmm. for you. So, so that's pretty much why I went that direction because I was tired of dealing with developers. Anybody can and, do uh, it, huh? That's yeah, great. And, and quite frankly, creating content is a lot more fun than dealing with code. That's cool. Um, who are some of your favorite um, YouTubers or online influencers, if you don't mind me asking? You know, it, it's, it, it's not a YouTuber per se. It's more the type of content. Like, you know, I, I always enjoyed looking at content, anything food related. So <laughs> pretty much it, you know, like anything food related. And I always liked channels where they were able to grow without a face. So the, the content mm. is not, it doesn't rely on a personality. It's, okay. it's more based on a concept, you know? So like watch mojo, for example, or, uh, comic book resource yeah uh, you know all the, all those top 10 channels are, are great even taste tasty for example like the cooking channel mm -hmm. why do mm -hmm. i like it because there's not a face it's just hands okay making food. so so those are the type of channels i like to look at because i love it. I, I think those the beauty are your first those, two types of channels too so exactly and, and the beauty was those two channels is I feel it's a lot easier to sell down the line if you want to exit mm -hmm. uh, YouTube. While if you create a, a uh, character-driven YouTube channel, you will be, uh, you'll be a, a hostage to the talent, mm -hmm. so to speak. All right, next question. You know, with the, the success that you saw on your channels, I mean, it's pretty amazing. No one just gets hundreds of thousands of subscribers like that out of the box. And I'm sure you must have had, you know, every time you go to conferences and emails and people hitting you up left and right, what, how, how did you do well, Not necessarily how did you do it? Because uh, maybe that's a longer formula, but what is some of your advice to a new guy like me who's just starting out, you know, on YouTube? How, what, what can I do? 
well, I think it's just kind of cliche, but you got to do something you like because you're going to be doing it every day. Like look at my channel. So 365 videos a year. If you don't like the content, it's going to be quite dreadful to continue to create content. But with regards to being successful on YouTube, you want to create content that people want, are searching for. Hmm. That's one thing. Number two, once the content is out, you want to focus on retention. So all things being equal, you want your videos to have a minimum of 50% retention. And then when it what's comes that, to the what's thumbnail, that mean, the 50% retention that they finish watching it or they, they come back yeah, that they watch at least 50% of the video. So I if see. it's a 10 minute okay. video, okay. you want them to watch at least five minutes. Cool. So minimum 50% retention and the click through rate and that no one's really going to have the answer. What is the magic number for click through rate? Because it mm -hmm. depends on your genre that you're in. So the only way you could determine is once you publish a video, if you have a 5% click through rate, which is the CTR, your next video, you want to make it six and then seven and eight mm -hmm. and you know, so on and so forth. You always want to bring it as high as possible. Great. But with regards to retention, I really believe 50% is the minimum. And once you hit 60, 70%, your, your video is going to fly. Sounds like you really spend the time looking at those tools, uh, the analytics tools that you get in YouTube. Is that Absolutely. You, okay. you, you got to live by them. And then as far as the you saying, trying to find what people are looking for, are you also using maybe something like Google Trends or Google Keyword Research to find out what are those hot topics that people are searching for? Correct. So you could use you Google Trends, that. Google Keyword Research, and just hitting the trend button on YouTube. Okay. Good advice, man. That's great stuff. All right. Uh, oh, here's a good one for you. Uh, I've, one of the things that also inspired me about you, not just your success and you're a cool dude, but you're also a black belt in jujitsu. And for those people who don't realize, you know, it's not like Aikido or Taekwondo and I'm not putting those guys down. It's not even like judo. Those guys are good too, but a black belt in jujitsu can take, you know, 10, 14 years. Some people take 20 years getting it and they say less than 1% of 1% of anyone who ever starts that journey completes it. Um, and I was wondering if, you know, I don't know if it's a myth that people who have these types of discipline and the physical discipline and the physical fitness and that focus on your health and your physical fitness, do you feel like that's been a contributing factor to your success in life and business? Or is it just something you do because you love it? No, I, I don't know. I think I just do it because I love it. I mean, That's the great thing about jujitsu is sometimes you're the hammer and sometimes you're the nail, right? And that's <laughs> like in life. Sometimes you do good and sometimes you do bad. That's pretty much it. I've experienced that. Okay, cool. I, I, I'm kind of leaning more toward that. I was thinking about possibly doing a video talking about the connection between uh, physical fitness and uh, success in business. And I'm thinking maybe there's not much either because I've seen some really sloppy, out of shape people making millions of dollars. So, hey, you know, maybe there's not a formula on that one. But I wanted to get your thoughts on it, you know, because I know it's something that you're serious on. I've uh, spent some time with you in the gym and yeah, you wrapped me up and had me neon belly and puking pretty quick. So it's pretty <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's great. It's definitely a humbling experience. Um, I've already had some comments from some other people who are interested in travel. Um, they want me to talk a little more about travel and doing business internationally. Uh, I know you've been out to the Philippines uh, before to visit my facility in the Philippines there. And I was wondering if, oh, and I think you have, you've done, so you've had some partners in Europe. So I wanted to see if you could talk to us a little bit about doing the business across borders and international travel, and maybe just a little bit about your experiences um, with, with getting around the world like that. Well, I mean, right now with COVID, it's kind of hard to, to travel, right? Mm. <laughs> it was the sure. quarantines and everything, but uh, no, I have some business partners in Austria, and they're great. I mean, they're not on the day-to-day -day, uh, operations, but they, they help us out on the uh, some technical stuff. I mean, like I said, I'm not big on 
software development, but we still use some softwares to manage our teams here. You, you, you got to keep in mind that we are in the Montreal office. We're about 10 people, but mm -hmm. we work with over 50 to 60 freelancers. So wow. we do need to use quite a few tools to manage all the different free, freelancers that we work with. Mm -hmm. Wow. Very interesting. And uh, do you have any thoughts about, you know, using global resources, uh, having a, a middle class millionaire like yourself, or just someone who's just starting out, um, being able to leverage the resources that they can find all over the world? Do you have any? Oh, absolutely. I mean, like, I, I believe engaging your viewers and communicating with them is crucial. Mm -hmm. So we actually hire a, a full-time uh, comment manager out of your facility yeah. who, uh, who manages the comments and the comment section and the job of this comment manager is, you know, try to steer people to watch more content or send them links to relevant content that we produce. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, that's definitely something not, obviously I practice what I preach because I first got on the plane and went to India in 2006 and started using global resources. And when I got there, it wasn't as developed as it is now, neither was the Philippines, uh, but I could look around and I saw Oracle and Microsoft and these huge companies have been leveraging global resources for decades. And my whole goal was that why can't the little guy do it? You know, so I, it was wasn't too much for me to just book a ticket, get over there and get on the, the boots on the ground and see what I could do. How can I use those, those resources for my company as well? So I'm glad to see that you're also doing that. And I think that's maybe also a good key to your success. I think it's a good key to scalability um, as well. So, yeah. And it's more cost efficient. Yeah. All right, buddy. Well, I know you're a busy man. I thank you so much for doing this video. I hope we could do more of these. Uh, Really, I, uh, not blowing smoke. I'm really honored, you know, to have a, a big time YouTuber, you know, as my first interview on my channel. So thanks, thanks a lot. Buddy. Buddy. Looking forward to roll with you uh, once we're all vaccinated. Whew. Yeah, hope I can handle it. I've gotten a little bit better since last time, but I'm sure you'll <laughs> still beat me so quick. All, all right. right, have a good one. Later, you, buddy. Andrew. Bye. Shut